This is Common Picks by the Glick. Hey, and I'm your host, Jason Glick. Hey, Jason, what do you have for us today? Well, today, John, I'm going back to that inexhaustible well that is Marvel Events. Because, you know, it is like sometimes they'll have like a couple of these every year. Sometimes it seems like it will never stop. Like they're just like going to keep throwing stuff at us because like, hey, you know, like the only thing people read is Marvel Events. Because, hey, you know, if you want to keep track of the overall narrative of the Marvel Universe, well, you don't need to read the comics. Well, the individual comics, you just need to read the events. <laughs> eh, oh, well. But as far as Empire goes, um, it's one of those um, weird ones where it's just kind of like, it didn't spring up naturally from an ongoing story, like, say, um, in Infinity or it's like or the War of the Realms, which was um, like something that was set up for years in the, in the Thor comics. Empire is something that was um, dug up from the uh, realms of Marvel continuity, like in the old, like something that's done from the old days of the Kree Scroll War back back in the seventies. Basically, it's like one little note. While well, everyone knows that the Kree and the Scroll are like have been at each other's throats for like forever. I mean, hey, it's like everyone knows about like that whole Kree Scroll War. One thing you may not know about that that war is that it started when the Scroll, uh, the Scrolls, like visited the Kree's home planet, and it's like and basically put set them against like these other aliens, like the Kotati, a bunch of like plant plant aliens who um, basically um, won, won the scroll's favor in this conflict, but then the Kree um, slaughtered slaughter the Kotati and then um, like took the, uh, the stuff that the uh, scrolls had earmarked for their, for them in their win. And thus, 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 thus began like an, like a dec like a, the beginnings of like an interstellar empire and like a millennia long enmity with, like with the scrolls. So, but, um, and so that's something that's been like a key cornerstone of like Mar Marvel continuity right here in Empire, um, which is, um, which is co-plotted by, um, Al Ewing and Dan Slott. Slott, who everyone will I know from like last, last week's podcast, Ewing is the, uh, is Marvel's new golden boy after his success with, um, the, Inc the immortal Hulk, which, um, has been really, it's like really good and basically like finally validated, um, Ewing's talent. I mean, God knows, like he's he's been a writer worth reading since his days on, it's like uh, it's like on Loki, Agent of Asgard, and and his criminally underrated runs on um it's like New Avengers, AIM, and its follow-on series, it's, um it's like of uh, like US USA Avengers, so so it's great to see that Ewing is finally getting getting the respect he deserves, and he's been in the T along with Slot. Well, along with Slot, because Slot's basically in kind of the backseat driver role here. He's being tapped to uh, do this. Um, it's like the, this event series. But as far as like, what does this have to do with the, the Kree Scroll War? Well, this basically goes back to the to the Kotati, the alien alien plant race that was slaughtered. It's like at it's like at the uh, the outset of the Kree's um, beginning for like uni universal dominance. Well, one of their um, it's like these these plant it's like this is this is something that like I've had. It's been a learning experience for me in the sense that like I've not heard heard, about, heard a lot about this um, like this history. Like with you talk about like oh well, apparently like like there's this like Avengers, the Swordsman, who um, like was upset to betray them, but didn't. But then was his uh, his apparently his he died, but then his mind was absorbed by this um, by this Kotati, and then he like he wound up um, it's like have, like going having a romance with with um speed like um. Well, I guess with space empath and kung fu specialist Mantis, and they had this kid together, the uh, it's like um like Koi, who apparently was like set to be like the space like the space society was gonna like bring bring peace to everyone, or like the kind of peace that comes with um like you know murdering everyone else, which is kind of where this it's like this uh, event series begins because. It starts because Empire um starts with um two prologue issues on the Avengers and Fantastic Four side because this is very much an Avengers slash Fantastic Four event. Basically, the Avengers like have been basically been brought brought back into contact with with Koi and the Kotati, and they've basically been told that, well, it's like here we are. We're trying to live our lives the best we can. It's like and ho and hey, here's your favorite like um Space Avengers baby um Koi, who is going. Who is just trying to defend his people against the uh, this new um, Kree Scroll Alliance? Because hey, the, after like millions of years, the Kree and the Scroll have finally decided to put a, put aside their ways and unite, like under 
like under an emperor. He's kind of a figurehead at this point, but he's also um, Emperor Hulkling, the uh, like it's like the uh, young the young Avenger who is like the uh, the son of like um cap of um the original Captain Marvel. It's like and a it's like and a scroll princess. So he's basically um leading the uh, leading a uni- unified Kree scroll alliance to it's like to wipe out the uh, the Kotati who've taken up residence on the blue area of the moon. And the Avengers, well, it's like they're kind of like, oh, what the the Kree and the Skrull are coming to wipe out our favorite sp- fa- our favorite space Avengers baby Messiah? Huh, no, that's not going to happen. And um, that's it's like that's kind of like the start on their end. But as far as the Fantastic Four goes, well, they've basically um, found aside well the uh, prologue issue um, written specifically by by Slot um, basically um, shows shows them rescuing two like. Like um two like um like like two kids one one a Cree Cree kid another is a scroll kid they've been forced to fight in this arena for everyone's it's like amusement it's like and it's it's like and it's just a reminder of like you know what the uh it's like you know what this war caught like you know cost these people over the years and also there's some fun like like casino hijinks with Franklin Valeria and their mom whoops and it's like and basically like as the uh it's like as a Fantastic Four like you know like are going back to Earth with these these kids they've um, liberated in tow. Well, then they come across the, uh, it's like the Kree scroll, like Armada. And like, you know, they figure like, you know, wait, what's going on here? And they, they get the lowdown from Emperor Hulkling and they find, find out, well, okay, this sounds, this all sounds reasonable, but it basically starts off with the series starts off with like the Avengers and the Fantastic Four, like at odds with each other. And it's like, and ultimately like the, while the Avengers do manage to get the upper hands hand over the Fantastic Four and all, well, that's just a prelude to the fact that, hey, big surprise, turns out that the uh, Kotadi, it's like, weren't being completely honest about about their intentions. It's like, they basically want to see, they're basically, like, pissed about, like, how they've been treated all, the, all these years, and now they want to wipe out all sentient meat life, like, like, in the, it's like, it's like, in the universe. And, um, and Koi, well, it's like, he's, it's like, he's been, um, like, fed, fed this, this particular line, line of vengeance from his um dad the uh the uh avengers whose memories have been stuck in a plant person um the swordsman it's like and well he's that the plant person who's been stuck in the uh stuck with the mind of an avenger and whatnot uh it's it's crazy it's it's nuts it's um it's the kind of like insanity you expect from like from a marvel from marvel event and um he's basically basically the kutati are out to like take out everyone and so now you've got big um like like this plant like this big old plant empire just looking to wipe out everyone else and that's basically the, the thrust thrust of empire so how does it go well the core series um as like as detailed in the empire um collection is basically 10 issues two prologue issues six um see six issues of like of um superhero punchy punchy and um two um Two um, epilogue issues basically set up, you know, hey, what's what's coming next for um for like Avengers, like Avengers and Fantastic Four storylines. As far as things go, I thought um, Empire was um was fine. Um, it's like Ewing does a good job. Ewing and and Slot do a good job, just keeping it's like keeping the action going at a at a really fast really fast pace. There's some twists there and um some funny lines as well. I mean, it's like it's it's just kind of like the bare minimum of what you'd expect from a uh, like from a big Marvel event, and um, overall, it's like and in terms of like something that was dug up from like such musty continuity, it's like they do a good job of um, bringing you up to speed and keeping things it's like it's like relevant. But as far as um, you know, surprises and um, unexpected twists, it's like over the course of the series go. Um, I don't know. It's like there's not really a like a whole lot there. I mean, there is a feeling that that you know, like we're driving towards like you know certain specific plot plot points, and there are some like some like and while there are some cool moments here, like when um Hulkling def- like manages to uh, it's like um stop a um, Mjolnir's um it's like a like attack on his on his sword when he gifts and when he gifts the uh it's like his uh, mag- like his magic um king sword to to T'Challa. In term, in order to like stop, like some potential plan that may that may uh what that may leave um like Cap- um Captain Marvel dead. I mean stuff like 
stuff like that is fun. It's like, and I like seeing, you know, T'Challa, it's like, you know, like do his whole, like, hey, you thought I was dead, but nope. It's like, I, it's like, I was just faking it all along. i um, bit it, it's like, bit at the end. But I mean, it's like, overall, it's fine. It's like, I mean, it's like, I've read, I've read worse events, like stuff that like feels like it has no relevance to the overall direction of the Marvel Universe. Hey, looking at you, um, Infinity Wars, but, um, Empire, like, you know, like, basically sets up a story of, like, you know, people fighting, like, space, space vegetables, it's, like, all, all, like, all over the, it's, like, all over the earth, it's, like, and, it's, like, I think it's, I think it's all right, but I guess that, you know, if you're not, like, like, fully invested in the, like, uh, Mar- ongoing story of the Marvel Universe, or specifically if you're not, um, wondering, like, you know, what's going on with the, uh, like with the state of the Avengers and Fantastic Four, I mean to be honest, it seems like it's going like that. I feel that um, there's going to be like some better follow up for this for this event series directed in fan, in the issues of Fantastic Four because Slot is currently writing this. Ewing isn't currently writing any um, Avengers series, but he is writing currently writing the Sword series that is spinning out of these events. And God knows, like like seeing him like you know just tackle a series like it's like like that on his own terms. And it's also going to be part of, it's also part of the um, ongoing like X-Men, X-Men line as well, which, Hey, you know, it's like, I am all about, you know, following that as, as you all know, but um, Empire, you know, it's not bad. I mean, I'll admit, I didn't pick this up right away. I waited until I saw like a uh, decent, sa- decent markdown in it on, on Amazon. But um, overall it's, it's fine. It's decent. And, um, Oh, and one thing, no, it's like I'm getting ahead of myself here, but um, I think it's I think it's fine. But if you're following like the Marvel universe through through its events, then Empire is you know perfectly fine. It's like I don't think it's like one of the best. It's certainly not one of the worst. But you know the writing is it's like the writing is um, pretty pretty decent, and the art um, which um is mostly from Valerio Shitty who does the uh does the main event series and the Avengers um, epilogue. It's like, is, is pretty fantastic because Shitty is a, uh, is a pretty great artist. It's like overall, it's like, and he can um, do it. It's like, and he can like, he can deliver that kind of detail that you can appre- appreciate. And he's like great with like, you know, like big, big epic crowd scenes, especially in the Avengers um, epilogue issue, which I, it's just one of those moments where you just like want to look around and just see, you know, what is everyone doing there? It's like, and who can I spot? It's like, so yeah, that was, that was fun, but but Empire, you know, like I said, it's kind of, I guess it's kind of middle of the road, but if you're kind of interested in it, I'd recommend giving it a shot. Especially if you can read all the uh, um, side issues on Marvel Unlimited. Because, well, I know this is going to make me sound like a complete shill for the, for the app again, but man, I love this thing. Because, I mean, like, well, I bought the empire um like trade paperback for amazon because like like i said i got on a good deal when it comes to um reading all of the uh tie-ins to empire well i've just got all i gotta do is just bring them up on the on marvel unlimited i mean and so like if i want to like see well hey you know there's a uh there's a four issue empire x-men um miniseries well that sounds like very relevant to my interests and it is because no, part of it was um specifically written by um Jonathan Hickman, but also um all the other X Men um writers um like Benjamin Percy and like um Tinny Tinny Howard and Jerry Dugan, like also um contributed to it as well because, well, the uh, the start of that that tie in basically involves like Wanda, it's like Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, I'm um, trying to unring the bell that she did that she did when she said no more mutants at the end of um House of M. Well, she tried doing that, and um, by um, resurrecting, by trying to bring all of the uh, mutants who died in um, Cassandra Nova's massacre of Genosha back at the start of Grant Morrison's X-Men run back to life, it didn't go well. In fact, all she brought back were zombies. But after some conferring with Doctor Strange, she just bas- she basically uh, managed to they managed to like um, defuse her spell. And basically, well, the fuse fell like after 30 days. So long as no one comes to Genosha after 30 days. Well, guess who shows up at Genosha like during this event? The Kotati. So they're basically, they basically got their plans for, uh, 
harvesting the island, but only to find out that there's all these zombies. So we've got mutant plants versus alien zombies. That should give you an idea of the level of seriousness that this event has, as um, basically involves like a lot of a lot of random X Men plus the old ladies of um horticulture, um coming coming along to try and to, like you know try and make sense of this of all this chaos here. For the majority of its run, it's just kind of like an escalating series of r ridiculousness. It's like a people just like more people coming in, like more like the conflict that like escalating like. Like further, further and further out of scale, and it's, and it's entertaining in that, like in that regard. It's like right up until the end when, um, it's like when Hickman takes over again. It's like and things like you know coast to a more like um sedate end, which probably wasn't the best idea for the kind of story that was going here, but it does feel like um Hickman is trying to underline the fact that well you know hey X Men um trying to bring bridge life between life and death, hmm maybe these mutant pro resurrection protocols aren't you know like the best like best thing out here maybe this could be heading towards a uh it's like a kind of like a kind of like i'm um, crazy end or not or not good end at least so but overall it's like of the uh like uh, empire tie-ins that i read um like the x-men one is most is most re relevant probably to like well the ongoing x-men story at least oh and i will say that the uh, two um, Empire tie-in issues of of uh, X Men that Jonathan Hickman wrote for the for the main X Men series are pretty solid because we get um get a further idea of what's going on in um Vulcan's mind. It's like after it's like you know like hey he was a guy who was thought he was dead but was just like floating around in like a extra dimensional fault and it turns out that some other aliens were able to get their hands on him and we get get an idea of like you know just what they had planned for him like in this. It's like in like in issue ten, issue eleven, however, is kind of like a, a pretty pretty straightforward um, magnetic glorification issue. It's like as he's he leads a charge against the uh, the Kotati from it's like from Krakoa, and it's, it's like and as illustrated by um Lenil Yu, it's like it's it's pretty fantastic as you get to see him like dropping repeated satellites on it's like it's like on the Kotati general's head, which is a good good um like straightforward comedic moment and also at the end when he just underlines that hey you know it's like like magneto it's like hey it's like you know his wallet like absolutely says bad motherfucker on it and so yeah but as far as like non x-men related um empire tie-ins go um probably the most relevant to the uh, main series are the uh it's like it's like Let's see. Are the um, like three issue are the Lords of Empire um, one shots like Celestial Messiah, which basically um, like shows shows you um, Koi's, um it's like um, personal history and has and how he tries to um, have cash things out in a mental throwdown with his mother Mantis, um, Emperor Hulkling, which he shows you how um, Emperor Hulkling became Emperor Hulk Hulkling, and um, Swordsman, which basically shows you like the uh, inner turmoil like suffered by. By this um Kotadi who is like you know trying to like deal with the fact that he's got this like merge of this filthy human Avenger like stuck in his head. These these are fine, and I'm at the add like a certain level certain level of depth to the overall it's like to the overall like um conflict in like in Empire. Are they like absolutely necessary reads? No, but like I kind of I kind of wish that like they had made like a bit more effort to like accommodate like these. It's like these particular stories, like in it's like in the main one, okay. And then you've got the uh, tie-in issues, um, like from Fantastic Fantastic Four, written by um, by Dan Slott, which it's like focuses on the uh, Kree and Scroll kids that were rescued by, it's like by the event by the Fantastic Four, it's like and how they're um dealing with um, with the it's like with the fact that you know they were forced to fight in this arena, like for people for people to gamble on like who was gonna win. And like, they they were also um gifted with or quote unquote gifted with the uh, entire like like his, like um like a warrior history of the Kree and the Scroll Empires respected. So basically, these are kids like who are like genetically engineered to hate each other. It's like and you know they've got and now that they've been freed of of that of fighting against each other for like for everyone's amusement. Well, what what do they do there? Well, they get to serve in a tie-in story that basically um involves. Um, Wolverine and Spider-Man coming in to fill the uh, a, like a, a ju adjutant roles for um, for the Fantastic Four because while the adults are fighting out in space 
Franklin and Valeria are stuck are stuck on Earth, like trying to take care of the kids, and also you know like and and when the uh, when they sent send the call out for like former Fantastic Four members to uh, help give them a hand, well, Spider Man and Wolverine it's like are it's like are I'm um, tap tapped for this thing. It's like and you know it's a it's a good story, and it also and I and I guess because you know because Slot was one of the um, minds behind Empire. Like this gets one of the uh, more key plot points in the sense that, it's like the they're like the kids are kidnapped by the um, priests of Parma, a plant worshipping um, martial arts um, group group in the Marvel universe, and they're they're basically um, used to um, want to use the kids like you know genetically engineered um, histories to basically like um, for, drive a wedge between the uh, like the Korean scroll like uh, like fighters, so so like they say like. So basically, I get their get, get this. They get this device. Oh, what was it like? Some kind of Cree Omni Wave generator, something like that. And um, basically, try they try and um, like broadcast like you know their their histories of of hate between each other to drive the empires apart. But in a in a nice in a move that I can kind of, like it's familiar, but I can still kind of appreciate. You know the uh, like um Franklin and Valeria get the kids to remember that you know hey you know like in the end like the only ones we had to rely on were each other. Like, like when we were fighting in that in that intergalactic arena, and so we've got to it's like, and so we're kind of like we kind of understand each other. We we're ultimately friends, and you know, it's like it's kind of like they they turn that hate in, into friendship, and it's you know, it's nice, it's a nice sentiment, especially in this day and age and all. But um, oh, and then there's the uh, two like Avengers related uh, miniseries. One basically is like Avengers specific, and um, basically it shows you that what the event what couple teams of avengers were up to in terms of like fighting off like a pl- like like the plant man it's like in it's like in new york the uh the uh, kotadi who led the invasion of the savage land and turned um sh- and, and turned sh- uh like uh, uh kazar's wife against it's like like against him it's like and also like a uh, like a kree scroll it's like a detachment to like one getting on the bad bad side of um Qu- quicksilver mockingbird and wonder man it's fine. It's like I can't say it's like it adds a whole lot to the to the event, but um, it's okay. I mean, for sure, comic that I was able to read for free. I mean, that's cool. But um, then there's like Avengers Captain America. Sorry, Empire Captain America, which basically like shows Captain America trying to get the uh, organize the American armed forces um, assault against uh, like against the uh, like the Katadi and eh. It's all right. I mean, it's like on one hand, I like see it's basically like an, a, a pretty straightforward like story, like Captain America just like you know doing, it's like doing what needs what needs to be done. It's like and also just like showing how America just kind of like screw things screw things up when um when it's not I'm letting Captain America um like it's like run everything. So it's like it's not like I said it's these tiny issues they're not bad but they're just kind of like def- like really kind of okay. I mean, it's like I didn't get a chance to read everything that I wanted to because apparently, like, Immortal She-Hulk is um, still not available on Marvel Unlimited. But we'll but we'll see how that how that goes because it feels like like that's going to be written, that's a one shot that's going to be written by Ewing, and I'm sure he's got some something to say about how uh, what about Jennifer Walters um, like new status quo, especially since there's some dialogue in here that uh, during the course of the uh, series that ties into it's like his his overall um. Like like his overall storytelling in um in Immortal Hulk, but as far as the uh, the tie-ins go, like I said, make time for the X Men stuff. Um, everything else, eh, it's fine. And as for Empire, well, like I said, the old, the main the main series is it's like it's, I think it's it's a fine like uh like Marvel of, like event. It's a fine Marvel event, but I can't say that it's like it's it, it really like um. It's like gets, like it's not it's not the best it's not the worst worst but like you know it's it's still it's still decent reading I mean like if you don't feel like um ordering it for your for your library that's probably worth reading on it's like a Marvel Unlimited if you have it which man it's like whenever it's like I say whenever I I'm do like another Marvel series in the future it's like I'm just probably gonna keep like digging into like all the stuff that's being offered it's like like on this app because well. I don't know, it's like I, I think I think I've already um, 
made, made good use of it but man it's like it's it's like i i've got i've got my money's worth worth out of it and if you read as much marvel stuff as i do then it's absolutely worth like um like paying like paying the uh, 70 dollar year yearly fee as it as it is so but um overall it's like empire it, it's fine but you know it's like not something i would say you need to rush out it's like and buy there you go uh john it's like uh any thoughts on your end about uh, any of this? Well, that seems pretty solid, um, your uh, recommendation there. So, um, you know, uh, I don't think there's much else to say. Um, so, yeah. Fair enough, sir. Yeah, I mean, uh, outside of that, do um, you know what you're going to be talking about next time? Next time, I'm going to be giving my thoughts on uh, Chainsaw Man. And assuming I can uh, it's like um, nail down enough people. Like, I got other people I want to um, like drag in their in- input input on so it's like it so like hopefully it won't be just me so like hopefully we'll have some like guest stars it's like guest stars in the sense that you know like they are like friends of this podcast and all so all right sounds like a good plan we'll talk to you next time on comet picks by the glick all right laters